What is Adonian art? Adonian art is a term that refers to the art and architecture produced under a new powerful dynasty that established itself in the eastern portion of the Holy Roman Empire after the power of the Carolingian dynasty had faded. Three main rulers, Otto I, Otto II. And Otto III ruled from 919 to 1002 and were based in modern day Germany. During the Ottonian period, the arts flourished and new innovations in architecture, metalwork, and ivory carving were key elements in the so called Ottonian Renaissance. What are some of the challenges in studying ancient African art? Africa is a vast continent with significant variations in geography and culture. African art can include sculpture, pottery, jewelry, rock painting, textiles, and architecture among other forms. Much of African art was made from perishable materials, though stone and metal were also common media, and was meant to either be used in religious ceremonies, or was meant to be worn. Most African art is neither labeled nor signed by the artist. Many objects have been discovered accidentally and therefore without any context. Though there is some documentation, in general, ancient Africa lacks a written record as religious. And cultural traditions were transmitted orally from one generation to the next. And this can make it difficult for scholars to contextualize, and even confidently date, the ancient art that has been found. One of the most significant problems is illegal excavation and the selling of sensitive objects on the black market. This results in the often irretrievable loss of important information about a work of art. Similar challenges face art historians studying art from other parts of the world including but certainly not limited to the Pacific and the Americas. Who is Jeff Koons? Jeff Koons, 1955, is a controversial, highly successful contemporary artist known for monumental, brightly colored sculpture and art produced by large teams of assistants. A former commodities broker who trained at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and the Maryland Institute College of Art, Koons creates art that critiques commercialism. For example, he displayed vacuum cleaners in clear, perspex boxes, in a series called The New 1979, and later began making enormous, highly polished balloon animal sculptures that were praised for their technical virtuosity and criticized for their over-the-top decadence. Koons is also famous for his large topiary sculpture, Puppy, 1992, and his Rococo-esque sculpture, Michael Jackson and Bubbles, 1988, a golden, ceramic sculpture of the King of Pop with his pet monkey. Kuhn's art is polarizing because it blurs the line between high art and spectacle, which some say is exactly the point.
What is Las Meninas? Las Meninas, 1656, is huge, both in its physical size and its significance in the history of art. While at first glance the painting appears to be a simple depiction of the young princess. Infanta Margarita Teresa, posing for her portrait, further inspection reveals a much more complicated scene. The Petit Princess, wearing a white dress and a ribbon in her blonde hair, is at the relative center of the image and is surrounded by her doting attendants and a well-behaved dog. Behind the attendants, a chaperone and perhaps a bodyguard, watch over the room. In the far right background, an open door lets light into the space as the Queen's Chamberlain steps in. To the left of the group stands the artist himself, Diego Velázquez. He is poised and confident with his shoulders back, holding his palette for the viewer to clearly see. In front of him is an enormous canvas upon which he is. Presumably painting the image that we are now seeing. Curiously, just behind the infanta's head, is a mirror hung on the back wall. Within this mirror, we can see a reflection of the king and queen. What is the God's Calc Gospel Lectionary? The God's Calc Gospel Lectionary was one of the first Carolingian illuminated manuscripts to use the New Caroline script. And was named for a scribe who signed his name in the book. Produced at the court scriptorium at Aachen, it was meant to be read aloud. And commemorated the 781 baptism of Charlemagne's son. The God's Calc Gospel Lectionary is notable for its artistic naturalism and incorporation of ancient Roman styles. The luxurious manuscript, with gold and silver lettering, and extensive use of the color purple. One of the most expensive pigments, served as an artistic inspiration and a model for later gospel books. What is a Byzantine icon? In Greek, the word icon means image and it is an important part of religious worship in the Orthodox Christian Church. An icon is a sacred representation of a holy person usually a saint, Christ, or the Virgin Mary. Byzantine icons were usually painted on wooden panels but also included ivory, mosaics, textiles, and more. Icons held powerful religious significance some icons were even linked to miracles. Towards the end of the 6th century, a conservative group of iconoclasts, literally image smashers, worried that the icons themselves were being worshipped and icons became targets for destruction during the iconoclastic controversy in the 8th century. What is magic realism? first coined in 1925 by the German art critic Franz Roh. 
magic realism flourished from the 1920s to the 1950s. Magic realism can be described as a realistic approach 228 to fantastical subject matter. Artists most associated with the style include American artists Yvonne Albright, 1897-1983, and Peter Bloom, 1906-1992, as well as French artists Paul Delvo, 1897-1994, and René Magritte, 1898-1967. Who was probably the most famous magic realist painter, but is usually categorized as a surrealist. The works of These artists are characterized by a sense of mystery juxtaposed with the normalcy of everyday objects. Who is Titian? Titian is the nickname of Tiziano Vecalio, who started his career as Jurgen's assistant and went on to become the official painter to the Republic of Venice. Titian essentially picked up where Jurgen left off after his early death and worked on a number of paintings attributed by some to Jurgen. Titian was a highly regarded painter during his long life and was even praised by Charles V. The Holy Roman Emperor, who wanted only Titian to paint his portrait. Titian worked in oil, and was known to finely grind his pigments. And apply many layers of glaze to the surface of his canvas. As a result, Titian's paintings are nearly unparalleled in their vibrancy and color. What was the Ottoman Empire? The Ottoman Empire was a Turkish state founded in the 13th century by Osman I. Who then expanded his territories, eventually dislodging Byzantine rulers and taking over Constantinople in 1453. Constantinople, now called Istanbul, became the capital of the Ottoman Empire, which by the 15th century controlled large portions of North Africa, the Middle East, and the Mediterranean. The Ottoman Empire was one of the longest lasting powers in history. Only falling in 1922 when Turkey became a republic. How did Japanese art change during the Meiji period? The Meiji period lasted from 1868 to 1912, and during this time oil painting became popular in Japan after Japanese artists were exposed to Western styles of art. Subjects popular during the Edo period, such as courtesans, were still popular during the Meiji period. For example, in 1872, Takahashi Yuichi painted Warren, Grand Courtesan. A Western style portrait painted in oil, but that incorporates patterns and colors used in ukiyo-e paintings. In this painting, Takahashi Yuichi, 1828-1894, depicts the elegant sitter's brightly colored garments as disparate. Abstract sections of color and texture, a technique derived from traditional Japanese painting. Western styles were so popular during the Meiji period that some 
artists were concerned that Japan would lose its own distinctive style. Traditional artists such as Yoko Yama Taken 1853-1908, wanted to breathe life into Japanese styles of painting by infusing them with some Western techniques. But to emphasize their Japanese character in a style known as Nihonga. What is Impressionism? Impressionism is an artistic style that developed first in France in the latter half of the 19th century and is known for a somewhat unfinished quality, as well as a focus on leisure and cafe scenes, landscapes, cityscapes, and genre scenes. Like the realists, the impressionists were interested in capturing visual reality. But they were particularly interested in the properties of light, both natural and artificial. Artists such as Claude Monet studied changes in the colors of the atmosphere as the sun moved through the sky. Recent rainfall intrigued artists like Gustave Calabot and Camille Pissarro, who both painted natural light and light from gas lamps that reflected off the rain-soaked streets of Paris. Most Impressionists came from middle or upper class French families. But because their work was initially unpopular, they often lived in poor neighborhoods in Paris. Frequently gathering at the Café Guerbois in the Montmartre district. The popularity of leisure and café scenes is a tribute to the lifestyle of the Impressionists. The Impressionists had a difficult time being accepted by both art critics and the art viewing public. And were regularly rejected from exhibitions at the Palais de Beaux Arts, Palace of Fine Arts. Instead, they held their own shows between 1874 and 1886. And ended up having an enormous influence on modern art. Today, Impressionism continues to be one of the most popular styles of painting and sculpture. And Impressionist shows attract thousands of visitors to museums and galleries around the world. What is the hours of Jean D'Evreux? The Hours of Jean d'Avreuse is a 14th century book of hours illuminated by an artist named Jean Pucel and was a gift from French King Charles IV to his third wife, Jean d'Avreuse. The book may be tiny in terms of physical dimension. Only a few inches, in fact, but is big in terms of artistic innovation. It is known for its grisale illustrations which feature a grey monochrome style that results in unique, sculpturesque figures. The illuminations, which often incorporate examples of Gothic architecture into the background, are innovatively rendered using spatial recession, creating a sense of depth not seen in earlier medieval painting. Who was Chimabui? In the lives of the artists, Giorgio Vasari describes the 13th century. Artist Simabo as the man who shed the first light on the art of painting. 
he is credited with innovations in naturalism, his art bridges the gap between the flat Byzantine style of painting and the more realistically proportioned style associated with the Renaissance. Comparing the work of Simabo and his apprentice, Giotto, the difference is clear. Simabo's panel painting, Virgin and Child Enthroned, c. 1280, depicts the Virgin Mary and infant Christ surrounded by saints. The work is a blend of Gothic, Byzantine, style and newer Renaissance techniques. The folds of the drapery worn by the Virgin Mary are defined by gold lines. The figures of the saints are elongated and thin. Infant Christ appears to have the proportions of an adult. Despite the flatness and the stylized forms, Simabo scene is warm and real. The figures are naturally proportioned and their faces are thoughtful, engaging, and diverse. Giotto's painting of the same scene represents a major shift away from Gothic styles and towards more realistic images of figures and of three-dimensional space. The solid form of Mary's body can be seen through her heavy blue robes and the infant Christ sits firmly upon her lap. The figures in Giotto's Virgin and Child enthroned are realistically modeled and Mary's throne appears to extend back into real space. What is the Pyramid of the Sun? The Pyramid of the Sun is an Aztec site from pre-classical Mexico. Located in Teotihuacan, near modern-day Mexico City. With a population of 200,000 people, the city of Teotihuacan reached its peak. Between 350 and 650 CE similar in size to the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. The Pyramid of the Sun was the most important architectural monument in the city. Aligned with the Avenue of the Dead. The structure was over 200 feet high and 720 feet on each side at the base. Made up of a series of steps, a stairway led to the top where a temple used to sit. The exterior of the building would have been painted and faced a smaller temple called the Pyramid of the Moon. Who is Mona Hatum? Mona Hatum, 1952, is a Palestinian video and installation. Artist who was raised in Lebanon and works primarily in Britain. Hatum's conceptual installations and performance pieces often communicate themes of exile and authority. Examples of her work include the minimalist Sokol du Monde, Base of the World, 1992-1993. A large black cube that contrasts a metallic interior structure with a softer, more organic exterior embellishment. What is cuneiform? Cuneiform is the first system of written language, invented by the Sumerians around 3100 B. 
CE, it was originally pictographic. This means, for example, that a bull's head, would represent a bull. Over time, cuneiform evolved into a more abstract system of signs consisting of wedge-shaped lines pressed into clay tablets with a pointed tool called a stylus. Cuneiform was used to keep track of business records in cities like Uruk, in modern-day Iraq. Cuneiform tablets have withstood the test of time and offer scholars a wonderful window into the culture of the ancient Near East. What is Rubenesque? Rubens had a very particular way of depicting figures in his paintings. His works are filled with strong, voluptuous, and attractive people. His style is so consistent, that these Rubenesque figures serve as a relatively quick and easy way to identify a Rubens painting. In his mythological painting, Venus and Adonis, C. 1635, Rubens depicts the ancient goddess of love just as her lover, Paris, must leave. Along with her cherubic son Cupid, Venus clings to Adonis. Her long, red hair flows around her face and her supple. Fingers press into Adonis' muscular arms as she pleads with him. Nude, her body is fleshy and white quite different from the thin. Elongated forms popular during previous centuries of Northern European art. The term Rubinesque is therefore used to describe any similarly depicted figure in the work of other artists who have been inspired by the Flemish master. What makes art good or bad? If you've gone to see a movie with a friend and argued about whether the film you both just saw was either good or bad, you are familiar with the foundations of art criticism. Your friend might believe The Matrix is a groundbreaking film with profound themes and solid acting. While you might completely disagree. When the arguing has continued for hours after the closing credits, it will perhaps become apparent that nothing you can say about the awkward romance or flashy graphics will convince your friend of your opinion. In the end, you agree to disagree. The same is true when to evaluating a work of art. When writing, critics think about the skill of the artist, technique form, and meaning of a work, but in the end, everything is debatable. Duchamp's urinal, fountain, is not inherently good art or bad art. Some critics believe it is profound while others write it off as a stunt. Arguing about whether it is good or bad is not only part of the fun of art appreciation but is an integral part of art historical scholarship. What was the Gothic Revival? Also known as the Neo-Gothic movement, the Gothic Revival was an 18th hand 
19th century architectural movement characterized by the revival of medieval style and coincided with the increased popularity of medieval literature and poetry. A good example of Gothic Revival architecture is Strawberry Hill. The private home of Horace Walpole, 1717-1797, in Twickenham, England. Walpole's home design included round turrets topped with crenellated battlements. Tooth-like notches used for defense in medieval buildings. And pointed arch tracery windows similar to those found in French Gothic cathedrals. Another example of Gothic Revival architecture is the Palace of Westminster in London. Which was rebuilt after a fire in 1834. Gothic Revival architecture was a popular style. For universities both in Europe and the United States, including the University of Glasgow, the University of Chicago, and the City College of New York, among many others. Who was L.E. Corbusier? L. E. Corbusier (1887–1965) was an architect and designer whose real name was Charles Edouard Ginaret. He was also a painter and writer, publishing towards a new architecture. In 1923, L. E. Corbusier's approach to architecture can be explained in his statement that a house is a machine for living quoted in Arneson 561. He is known for early home designs and later urban renewal projects. One of his earliest and most famous home designs is the Villa Savoy. Built between 1928 and 1930 in Poissy, France. The rectangular plan of the house allows for long, expansive windows that help to bring the outside in. Raised on pillars, the Villa Savoy is an early attempt to design a domestic space around the use of an automobile, which could be driven and parked under the house. For his urban projects, L. E. Corbusier believed that architecture could serve as a solution to poverty. He envisioned a total city, in which uniform architectural design would create an ideal living environment. Between 1947 and 1952, he designed the Unite de Habitation in Marseilles, France, with concrete as a primary building material. The project included duplex apartments along with shops restaurants, and rooftop park space a complete community. L. E. Corbusier's work on the Unite de Habitation inspired an architectural style named Brutalismi. What is a Kouros? Kouros, plural kouroi, is a term used to refer to a freestanding sculpture of a young male during the archaic period of ancient Greek art. A female equivalent is known as a kore, plural kore. These statues were usually life-size and influenced by Egyptian sculpture. A kouros faces frontally and takes a small step forward, much like the sculpture of Menkor and a queen. The arms are held firmly at the sides and the hair is formed in long rows of stylized braids. 
Unlike Egyptian sculptures, male Kuroa were completely nude and emphasized youth and athleticism. What is the archaic smile? Take a good look at an archaic kuros or kora sculpture and you may notice a subtle yet light-hearted smile playing on its lips. The close-lipped archaic smile gives cold stone sculptures a sense of warmth and life. Over six feet tall, the Berlin Kora, 570 to 560 BCE, has remnants of red paint and depicts a poised, column-like woman. Her robes fall rigidly and the folds in the fabric look almost like the fluting of a Doric column. She also holds a pomegranate, which therefore links her to the mythological deity Persephone, who was abducted by Hades and taken to the underworld as his wife. Contrasting the otherwise stoic austerity of the work. The Berlin Kora features a warm archaic smile, which brings her to life. Who was Mondrian? Piet Mondrian (1872–1944) was a Dutch painter who made significant contributions to 20th-century abstraction, especially geometric abstraction. He was an important part of the Distigital movement, and he is most well known for paintings that depict flat geometric grids in neutral and primary colors. During his early career, Mondrian's art was not totally abstract. Paintings such as Still Life with Ginger Pot, 1911, and Grey Tree, 1912, show the artist's early flirtation with Cubism and even earlier works such as Mill at Evening. 1905, are linked to the Dutch landscape tradition. Mondrian's style changed throughout his career. He was influenced by Cubism, but believed that the goal of painting should be complete abstraction as a vehicle for communicating reality. He supported the idea that color and form could impose pure reality on the viewer in what he called plastic expression. According to Mondrian, a work of art needed to balance movement, form, and color in order to achieve this reality, an aesthetic philosophy called neoplasticism. Mondrian's paintings, such as composition with large red plane, yellow, black, gray and blue, 1921, are meticulously painted to achieve the utmost informal balance and produce dynamic energy, a sense of depth, and a balance between simplicity and complexity. What is Hunter's Mural? Hunter's Mural is a name given to petroglyphs located in Nine Mile Canyon in Utah. The petroglyphs are an example of rock art, in ancient Greek. Petros means rock and glyph means writing or drawing, attributed to the Fremont culture of the American. Southwest
Hunter's mural depicts a bow hunter aiming his weapon at a flock of bighorn sheep. The Fremont used a unique method to create these Rock 92 images. The canyon walls were naturally stained a dark brown by bacteria. The Fremont scraped this brown varnish away to reveal a lighter shade of rock underneath and form a picture. Petroglyphs similar to Hunter's mural can be found across the American West and Southwest. Some American rock art is thought to date from as early as 7000 BCE. What is Klimt's golden style? Gustav Klimt was an Austrian artist who was the first president of a group called the Vienna Secession. A group of artists that favored highly decorative styles aligned to Art Nouveau. And wanted to break from the conservative artistic traditions of the Austrian Academy. Klimt applied gold leaf to many of his works, the most famous being the Kiss. 1907 to 1908, which depicts two lovers in a vulnerable embrace. The highly decorative style of the piece fits appropriately into the Art Nouveau aesthetic. But the ornate quality of Klimt's work belies its complexity. Klimt's golden masterpieces, and his legacy are still hotly debated by art critics and historians who argue about his impact on the history of art. But, in 2006, his silver and gold-leafed oil painting, Portrait of Adele Blockbauer I. 1907, sold for a reported $135 million, making it, temporarily, the most expensive painting ever sold. How was single-point perspective invented? Quite literally a Renaissance man, Filippo Bruno Lesci was a goldsmith. Clockmaker, mathematician, Latin scholar, and architect. It just so happens that he also invented single-point perspective. One of the most important technical innovations of the Renaissance. Also known as linear perspective. Single-point perspective is a mathematical system based on natural observation. Under the rules of single-point perspective, Distant objects are depicted smaller than objects closer to the viewer. While the far edges of similarly shaped objects appear shorter near the edges. This warping of forms is known as foreshortening. Bruno Lesci invented the idea of a picture plane, in which he imagined the frame of a Painting as a window through which the viewer sees an illusion of three-dimensional space. The artist lays out the scene according to a grid pattern, and every object in the picture. For example architectural objects like roof lines and walls, follow invisible lines called orthogonals. Which converge at a single point, known as the vanishing point, usually at eye level to the viewer. Strangely enough, Bruno Lesci was primarily interested in perspective not as a painter, but as an architect. His goal was to design an interior that drew a person's attention through a space, such as a church nave. Towards the altar, which he did effectively in his design for the Santo Spirito in Florence in 1434.
What is the significance of the meeting house in Pacific cultures? Meeting or ceremonial houses are a significant part of Pacific architecture. And many Pacific cultures use these larger halls or houses for religious or rite of passage ceremonies. For example, the Abalam people of the East Sepik province in New Guinea display art and ritual objects in ceremonial houses in order to attract spirits during rituals. Abalam ceremonial houses are traditionally decorated with art objects made in a variety of materials, including fruit, leaves, stones, and shells. On the island of New Ireland, ceremonial houses are essential for Malagan. Ceremonies and wood sculptures are carved and displayed at the front of the house. In the mid-19th century, Master Carver Rihara Hirokupo supervised the construction of Te Hauki Duranga. A Maori meeting house in Gisborne, New Zealand. The house, a type known as a warinui, is covered in detailed high-relief wood carvings that have been rubbed with shark liver oil and red clay to produce rich color and luminescence. Along the 234 A-frame ceiling, is a repeating pattern of painted wood rafters and lattice panels, which were made by women artisans. Though the nature of the carvings is traditional, they were done with European-style metal tools during a time in the colonial 19th century. As Maori architecture was changing under the influence of Christianity, meeting houses across the Pacific serve as important locations for community meetings, rituals, and other ceremonial uses. Their construction is inextricably related to the creation of art objects and to both the political and spiritual function they serve within a culture. Who were the literati? The literati, or Wenren in Chinese, were highly educated. Scholar painters often held in higher regard than the imperial court painters of the time because of their free-thinking intellectuality and because they did not rely on their art to make a living. Emerging during the Song dynasty, the literati are known for their relatively austere black ink paintings. Created using a painting technique called Shi Emo. They were also highly skilled calligraphers and poets. What is postmodernism? Postmodernism is a complicated term and a complicated theory which can be applied to art, architecture, literature, philosophy, and more. Literally meaning after modernism, postmodernism has been described as everything from a rejection of modernism, to a critique of modernism, to a new phase of it. So, postmodernism is either anti-modernism, or just more of it. Either way, postmodernism is defined in relation to its earlier counterpart. If modernism is unified and serious, then postmodernism is varied and playful. 
if modernism is a search for absolute truth, then postmodernism is a declaration that there is no such thing. Postmodernism began to be recognized as an approach to art starting in the 1970s and is perhaps most easily recognized in architecture. A good example of modernist architecture is Jared Riotveld's Schroeder House, 1924, which was designed with a uniform style, complete with coordinating furniture and interior design. By contrast, the Piazza d'Italia in New Orleans, designed in 1975, reflects the influence of various styles of architecture from Renaissance to Baroque to Modernism and is made up of a multitude of forms and colors. Where Schroeder House was stylistically unified, the Piazza d'Italia is stylistically diverse. What tools did Paleolithic artists use? Paleolithic artists used natural minerals to produce pigments in colors such as red, ochre, black, and brown. It is possible that these artists applied some of these pigments directly to the walls with their hands. But hollowed bones were likely used to spray paint onto the walls. Pigment-covered hollow bones have been found near some of the paintings by archaeologists. Other tools include chunks of moss or animal hair that would have served as a type of paintbrush. For carving, pieces of flint were used to make engraved lines. What is an arcade? An arcade is a series of arches, which are supported by piers or columns. Many medieval Christian churches contain interior arcades. As do many examples of Islamic architecture, including the Great Mosque at Cordoba. What is surrealist automatism? Surrealist artists and writers attempted to free themselves from the restrictions of rationality by tapping directly into their creative subconscious through automatic drawing and writing. Andre Breton described this process, which he called pure psychic automatism in the Surrealist Manifesto. And Surrealist artists such as Andre Masson. Joan Miro, and Max Ernst are known for their spontaneous, free-form work. Many of Masson's automatic drawings were done with pen and ink. While Ernst developed what he called frottage. In this technique, Ernst made rubbings of textured surfaces. Such as wood floor which were then incorporated into larger collage works. What is a ribbed vault? Unlike the rounded barrel vault so closely associated with the Romanesque style, Ribbed vaults are more structurally effective than thick walls. Allowing cathedrals like Durham to reach new heights, and ushering in the Gothic Age. 
looking much like the human ribs, a rib vault is composed of a fanning framework. A piped masonry that supports the weight of the ceiling and walls of a building. How did Rembrandt achieve such thoughtful expression in his work? Rembrandt's paintings invite subtle, emotional engagement. When gazing upon a Rembrandt portrait, it feels as if you are looking at a real, living person. Whose thoughts and emotions are fully accessible. This is no easy feat throughout his life. Rembrandt painted more self portraits than any other artist in the 17th century. He practiced by making faces in a mirror in an attempt to capture the likeness of multiple emotions and states of mind. In some of his early drawings, Youthful Rembrandts can be seen displaying shock, disgust, fear, and confidence. With his great painting skill, he was able to effectively represent textures and tangible details of clothing and skin. In his 1631 portrait of Nikolai Rutz, a fur merchant, the man's fur coat looks supremely soft and luxurious, highlighting his wealth and business success. And yet Rutz appears humble and modest due to his thoughtful gaze. Furrowed brows, and slightly bent posture. One of Rembrandt's later self-portraits. From 1661 shows the artist after significant financial failures and the death of his beloved wife, Saskia. Rembrandt's illuminated form emerges from the darkness, his eyes in shadow and his clothing simple. His familiar face is now lined with wrinkles and his former confidence is now lost to sloping shoulders and puffed cheeks. Through subtle manipulations in texture, lighting, and detail, Rembrandt demonstrates his masterful ability to facilitate an emotional connection between viewer and painting. Who is David Hockney? David Hockney, 1937, is considered an important early pop artist. Though he dislikes that association and his work demonstrates a range of styles. A prominent contemporary artist whose career kick-started while he was still a student at the Royal College of Art in London. Hockney's early work frequently incorporated poetic fragments and personal themes. Paintings such as We Two Boys Together Clinging, 1961, are reminiscent of the art brood of Jean. Du Buffet with scrawled handwriting and childlike forms. Hockney's mid-career paintings are notably smooth and painted with acrylic. Reflecting the artist's skill as a graphic artist as well as a painter. His most famous pop art work is arguably, the Big Splash, 1967. A brightly painted scene of a California swimming pool in which a jarring and geometric diving board juts into the center of the scene. A swirled splash breaks the smooth monotony of the pool's blue water, creating a photo-like image. In the 1970s and 80s, 
he experimented with collage by incorporating Polaroid fragments into highly ordered paintings. His work with photography led to a prestigious award from the Royal Photographic Society in 2003 Hockney continues to paint and receive recognition for his work, including monumental landscapes such as a bigger Grand Canyon. 1998, which is composed of over 60 individual paintings. What is the Great Mosque at Cordoba? During the 8th century, the Umayyad Caliphate reached as far east as India and as far west as Spain and Portugal, a region known in Arabic as Al-Andalus. The city of Cordoba was the capital of Al-Andalus and was home to one of the most impressive examples of mosque architecture in the Islamic world. The Great Mosque of Cordoba was one of the largest mosques ever built. It has no central altar or shrine, but features a prayer hall that reaches over 250,000 square feet. Besides its large size, the Great Mosque's prayer hall is notable for its use of hypo style. Creating the effect of a forest of columns that supports double rows. Of horseshoe shaped arches made up of red and white bricks, called voussoirs. As a result, the Great Mosque's hypo style hall feels immensely large. Artists and architects continued to work on the Great Mosque for over 200 years after its initial construction. Adding geometric marble carvings, grand mosaics, public fountains, and gardens. After Spain was conquered by Christians in the 15th century. The Great Mosque was converted into a cathedral. Who was Rembrandt? Rembrandt van Rijn, 1606-1669, was a Dutch painter known for his expressive paintings and prints. Including portraits, landscapes, and both mythological and biblical scenes. His paintings often rely on dramatic chiaroscuro. Which highlights the faces of his figures against dark, sometimes nearly black, backgrounds. He is considered one of the most important artists of the 17th century. He worked in Amsterdam for mostly Protestant patrons, usually wealthy merchants who commissioned portraits. 17th century Amsterdam was an economic powerhouse and his Paintings were in high demand as luxury items and financial investments. During his lifetime he achieved incredible wealth and success, only to lose it all in his later years. His changes in fortune are documented in his approximately 75 thoughtful self-portraits. Some of his notable works include The Night Watch, 1642, the Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nikolai's Tulp, 1632, and Bathsheba at Her Bath, 1654. What is the ecstasy of St. Teresa? The Ecstasy of St. 
Teresa is a central sculpture in the Cornero Chapel in the Church of Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. It is considered to be a masterpiece of Baroque sculpture and was made by Gian Lorenzo Bernini between 1645 and 1652. The sculpture depicts Saint Teresa of Avila, who in life experienced powerful visions. In her writing, Saint Teresa describes an encounter with an angel who stabbed her in the 138 heart with a golden spear. She believed the experience was an encounter with God. Bernini's complex sculpture, which dominates the chapel space, depicts this vision. Within an elevated niche, Saint Teresa seems to float amidst her undulating robes. Her toes peek out from underneath the mass of fabric. Curling in a combination of pain and pleasure during this divine encounter. Her mouth is open and her head tilts back as a small angel gingerly grasps at her clothes with one hand and grips a golden spear in the other, the spear points directly at her breast. The figures appear to float because they are supported by a hidden cantilevered mass of marble. Mirroring the spear, bronze beams of light descend upon the pair from above. Helping to frame the scene from within the niche and emphasize the presence of the divine. In other parts of the chapel, marble bystanders watch from theater boxes, in awe. The sculpture is like a frozen theater piece. It is a highly illusionistic depiction of the pleasure and pain of Saint Teresa. And a surprisingly sensual representation of the divine. What is the per game style? During the 4th century B. C. Alexander the Great marched Greek culture over nearly half the globe, and when he died suddenly in 323 BC, his vast empire fell into fragmented city states and small kingdoms. One such kingdom, Pergamon, was located in present day Turkey and became a leading city for art during the Hellenistic period. Art from Pergamon is known for being emotionally expressive and emphasizes acts of heroism. An example of the Pergamene style is a sculpture known as Gallic Chieftain killing his wife and himself. The sculpture depicts a military victory over the Celtic Gauls in France. It was originally in bronze, and now exists only in Roman copies. The work romanticizes the death of the leader of the Gauls. Who commits suicide rather than surrender to the Pergamese. His wife, who he has already stabbed to death, falls limp in his left arm as he turns away and plunges a sword into his own chest. This dramatic sculpture attempts to evoke a feeling of sympathy and admiration for the fallen chief, and is a powerful example of the expressive Pergamese style. Who is Mariko Mori? Mariko Mori, 1967, is a contemporary Japanese artist whose work includes videos, photographs, and installations, such as Tom N. A. Hugh, 2006, a high-tech, 
monolithic structure whose light changes and blinks as it reacts to information recorded by the Super Cameo Konda Neutrino Observatory in Tokyo. Mori's work is often influenced by technology and Buddhism. What markings distinguish images of the Buddha? The Buddha is not a god, but an enlightened being who has achieved superhuman status and has escaped the Buddhist cycle of life and death. The earliest images of the Buddha show the holy figure as a monk wearing long robes and can be identified by certain body attributes called lakshanas. As a boy, the Buddha was wealthy. Therefore one important body attribute is elongated ears due to years of wearing heavy jewelry. Another important marking is called the urna. A curl of hair between the Buddha's eyebrows, often depicted as a dot. Madras, or hand gestures, allow images of the Buddha to convey specific messages. For example, if the Buddha is shown with his right hand reaching towards the ground. This represents a call to witness the Buddha's enlightenment and is a madra known as Bhumisparsha, earth touching. How does Roman architecture differ from Greek architecture? Greek and Roman architecture are together referred to as classical architecture. As they share many characteristics including an adherence to the classical Greek orders of architecture and a sense of symmetry and balance. But, there are some key differences. Whereas the Greeks favored marble, the Romans invented concrete and they relied on this key building material in much of their architecture. Romans also emphasized circular forms and made extensive use of the arch, vault, and dome in their building projects, unlike the post and lintel structure of Greek buildings. While Greek buildings tended to feature cramped interiors built on a more human scale, Roman buildings had dramatically high ceilings and were generally more flamboyant than their Greek counterparts. What are the major periods of Mesoamerican art? Mesoamerican art Art of Mexico and Central America is divided into three main categories the pre classic period, c. 1200 B.C.E.300 CE classic period, c. 300 to 950 post classic period, c. 950 1521. The post classic period ended quite suddenly. When the major indigenous empires of the Americas fell to the Spanish conquistadores led by Hernan Cortes. What is significant about the standing male figure from Sangzingdui? Shang artists, c. 1700 to 211 BCE, 
are well known for making bronze sculptures using the piece mold casting process. Especially bronze vessels for water, wine, and food. But, when the standing male figure from Sangzingdui was discovered, it astonished scholars and changed the way they thought about ancient Chinese art. More than 8 feet tall, this towering male sculpture is highly abstracted with a long cylindrical body, jutting elbows, and large, circular hands. Nothing quite like this had ever been discovered, and scholars now think there may have been. Other significant art-producing cultures separate from the Shang dynasty during this time. What is the connection between Romanesque art and pilgrimages? During the 11th and 12th centuries, religious pilgrimages across Europe were extremely popular. On journeys that could last over a year, pilgrims walked along established pilgrimage routes. Visiting important churches and religious sites. One of the most famous pilgrimage routes connected Paris with Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Nearly 1,000 miles away. Pilgrimage churches, such as St. James Cathedral in Santiago de Compostela, were specifically designed to accommodate large groups of visitors. Additional aisled transepts, ambulatories, and radiating chapels were designed to aid the flow of pilgrim traffic. As well as ensure enough space for church officials to do their work. The doors of St. James were always open for visitors exhausted after a long journey. What is distigial? The violence and destruction of World War I shocked the world and groups of artists responded in various ways. For Dutch painter and architect Theo van Dusburg, 1884-1931, and Dutch painters Piet Mondrian, 1872-1944, and Bart van der Leck, 1876-1958. The goal was to create art that promoted universal peace and harmony, both visually and politically. They named their movement the Stijl, which literally means the style. Destigil is characterized by flat colors and simplified. Rectilinear forms a result of the group's need for visual clarity and mathematical simplification. Destigil is considered to be reductive because visual complexity has been distilled or reduced to only the most pure, meaningful elements. For example, Distigil artists preferred primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, or neutral colors such as black, white, and gray. The term distigil can be used to describe painting, furniture design, and architecture. Works include Jared Rietveld's Red Blue Chair, 1923. The Schroeder House in the Netherlands, and the paintings of Piet Mondrian. What are decorative arts? Traditionally, 
Decorative arts are objects that serve a function. For example, a jewelry box may be beautifully decorated with intricate metalwork. But the box itself is used as a container for jewelry. Fine art, on the other hand, serves no practical purpose and exists for purely aesthetic reasons. Painting and sculpture, for example, are considered fine arts. Whereas decorative arts include furniture, pottery, metalwork, jewelry, and some textiles. The line between decorative art, as well as craft, and fine art is increasingly blurry. As contemporary artists and theorists are questioning the significance of function in art. Why is this not a pipe? René Magritte's The Treachery, or Perfidy, of Images, 1928-1929 is a highly realistic oil painting of a tobacco pipe with the word Ceci and Est Bazun pipe, this is not a pipe. Painted below. How can El Greco's paintings appear so modern? To some, the paintings of El Greco appear more closely related to 19th century Impressionism or 20th century Expressionism than the 16th century Spanish styles of nearly 500 years earlier. His work is characterized by loose brush strokes, often ghostly. Elongated figures, and a use of colors in line with the Mannerists. El Greco's real name was Domnikos Theodokopoulos and El Greco means the Greek in Spanish. Born in Crete in 1541, he worked in Italy before arriving in Toledo, Spain. With the unfulfilled goal of becoming an artist in the court of Philip II. Although the king didn't favor El Greco, he did find many other patrons. His 1586 painting The Burial of Count Orgaz, depicts the soul of the dead count as it rises to heaven. Accompanied by an angel, and surrounded by an audience of saints. Holy figures, and well-known individuals from Toledo. The figures are pale, ghostly, and white which contrasts with the bright yellows worn by the clergy and the red fabrics worn by the Virgin Mary in heaven. The painting is arguably similar in style to Italian mannerists such as Pontormo. And El Greco is considered by some to be a mannerist painter. What are the classical Greek orders of architecture? Greek architects followed fairly strict conventions when designing temples in an attempt to produce a balanced and unified look, an aesthetic valued by the Greeks. The three main orders, or patterns of temple building design are, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Referred to as the classical Greek orders of architecture. These systems of proportion and style made a profound impact on the history of architecture and continue to be incorporated into building design to this day.
What are the symbolic meanings of the many objects in the Marod altarpiece? The Marod altarpiece is filled with religious symbolism related to the Annunciation. On the table next to Mary are lilies in a vase. The lilies represent Mary's purity and the fact that there are three of them suggest the Holy Trinity. Next to the lilies is a candle. The candle's flame has been recently extinguished and the wick smokes gently, this is a symbol of Christ's incarnation. A small image of infant Christ holding a wooden cross can be seen in the upper left. He flies on a ray of light and has just entered the room through a closed yet unbroken window, which is a reference to Mary's virginity. In the back of the room is a small, brass basin and washcloth. Symbols of Christ who cleanses the sins of the world. In the right panel, Saint Joseph, Mary's husband, is making mousetraps. This might sound strange, but the activity symbolizes St. Joseph's role as protector of Mary and Christ and shows him as a family man. 